Hello folks, hope you're doing well. It's another quick video. Well, I've just finished one about um, the football subject and this is another completely different one. This is among the uh, ministry Christian-ish ones. Well, it's not really Christian, but it's, it's something which hopefully people can learn from. Anyway, it's 12.22pm uh, on the 29th of June 2020. All right, okay. The other day, yesterday, I did, did a video on explaining how the neighbor's boyfriend in fact cut my throat because I'd had a go at her because she didn't care as to whether her dog harassed or attacked mine, which had been ongoing for over a year. You know, she would not, had no intention whatsoever in supervising her dog when it was outside. Not at all. You know, she wanted me to basically come and you know, leave, to leave the dogs in the boot of the car on incredibly hot days and come there to see if her dog was there, if her dog was there, to call her and call her and call her and call her and call her. Which sometimes you have to do for a good three or four minutes before she would finally come to the door and, oh, right, okay, bring the dog in. You know, am I supposed to shout the neighbourhood down? Yeah, so as you can see, it still is an irritating subject. Of course it is. Now, the reason why I'm bringing that up again is because I realised something yesterday. Um, I understand to a certain degree, from the point of view of the boyfriend, to a certain degree, I do understand it, that my first reaction, if I was with somebody and somebody had a go at, that, at her, then my immediate reaction would be, right, I need to have a chat with this person. My second reaction would be, why did he ever go at you? What did you do to piss him off? Oh, right, okay. You, again, were allowing your dog to harass his. I think it's, it's understandable for him to be upset about that, really. see it's the it's the thing that someone has a go at somebody you don't bother to ask well, why would they do that why would they have a go at you you know they've had a go at you a few times before and it's always been because of the fact that your dog has been harassing or attacking his so was it that again so if it's that again surely you should have learned as the owner of this dog that attacks his that you don't just let your dog out, you supervise it. Because generally speaking, it's going to go for your dog, your dogs, isn't it? One of them. You know, to harass or to attack. That's going to happen because it's always happened. Yeah. It's a pattern that just continues. So therefore, why do you want that pattern to continue? You know he's going to have a go at you. So why are you moaning at me that he had a go at you when you know that your behavior is going to get that reaction? That would be my point. So well, I'm sorry, but sorry, sweetheart, but you know, you want to keep pissing someone off, and then you're surprised when that person gets pissed off at you. Yeah. So no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't feel any animosity to the person. I mean, the most I would do is basically grab my wife or partner by by the arm drag them down to speak to the person and say, right, let's sort the situation out. Yeah. We're not, we've got a problem here that isn't being solved. So what do we do? How do we solve this? Yeah. So in a way, you, you are sort of speaking to that person, but you're, you're doing it from the point of view of saying, okay, you were both wrong, really. You know, if you hadn't done that, then that wouldn't have happened. So, you know. But that's people. And that's why, generally speaking, I try and keep myself to myself. And I don't bother speaking to people. Because people are a massive pain in the bloody ass. You know, they are hypocrites. They really are hypocrites. 
they can do something to you for ages and ages and ages and ages, and ages being incredibly disrespectful. But if you say something that's disrespectful towards them, all oh, hell breaks loose. So, excuse me? Do you have an understanding of right or wrong, or just that whatever's done to you is wrong, whatever you do to someone else is okay? Because when you're dealing with people like that, come on. You can't, ha you can't have a friendship or even a conversation, really, with people like that. Because if their understanding is whatever they do is okay, but it's, it's disrespectful to you. But as soon as you do something or say something it's disrespectful to them, <laughs> yeah, massive bloody explosion. All hell breaks loose now. How dare you say that? But what about how dare you do the things that you've been doing over the past months? How dare you do that? You know? Can't you even look at, again, your side? What did you do to cause that? You know? Yeah. If someone says something disrespectful about you or to you, then maybe that person was wrong. But what did you do to encourage that to happen? Were you in the wrong? I mean, you've got to look and say, jeez. <sighs> to a certain degree, wouldn't it be wonderful if people had been sterilized 20, 30, 40 years ago? Because the amount of crap parents who didn't teach their children the basics of right and wrong. The basics of right and wrong. I mean, even now we, we see it with these entitled parents. You see, like, there's videos on the r slash thing. And um, you got the entitled parents or the, the, um, the Karens, as they call them. And it's just that all the time that their children can never do wrong yeah they, they had ones where um was it the child wanted to have a go on this man's surfboard and the man said no it's my surfboard yeah plus it's a bit too advanced for a child to use child went running back to mum mum come over how dare you not let my child use your surfboard I demand you let, let my child use your surfboard excuse me and the problem is these Karens were brought up by people who as I say they should have been sterilized they shouldn't have been bringing up these people when you have a child it is not your child that child has come from God God has given you the responsibility, the opportunity to raise that child for him. But raise it in his will and his ways. You go and raise that child to think that, you know, if they are being incredibly disrespectful to someone for months and months and months and months and months, but then someone says something to them that they can cry blue bloody murder, and that whatever they've done doesn't matter. Excuse me, as parents, you failed, you have failed to raise that child as God intended, so you have sinned, are you going to repent of that? No. So you've got all these people that are parents who would tell parents who that's a sin, then they're not going to repent of, so they're going to hell because of that. Stupidity. Utter and total stupidity. Your children are not supposed to be your best friend. You're not supposed to be completely protecting your children from the reality of life. You're supposed to be teaching them about the reality of life, not protecting them from it. But that's it. I mean, you don't get people behaving like that if they've been raised well by their parents. Simple. You just don't get that. 
if they've been raised well by their parents, they understand that, yeah, okay, what I did was wrong. And I shouldn't have done that. Yeah, understandable. Yet you were out of order for what you said, but really, I shouldn't have done that. So I'm sorry. Yeah, that's that sorts of problem out. It doesn't continue it. The problem is you've got people that are too stupid to understand any of that. Yeah, they don't mind having that animosity with people all the time. Oh, great. Fantastic. It won't be me, but you're going to do this to someone else and that person's going to be a bloody psychopath. Then you're going to wake up face to face with God on your day of judgment wondering what the heck happened and God will say, your attitude. That's why you're here. Because you thought it was okay to keep pissing people off and you pissed off the wrong person. And so you're here. But by the way, you didn't repent, did you? So bye-bye. You go to hell and you spend eternity there. But that's what I say. With regards to evangelism, at the moment, unless it's completely blinking obvious that, um, that they need God in their lives, most people are too blinking stupid to repent. That's the reality of the situation. People are too stupid to repent because they can't face the fact that they are wrong. They just can't. I mean, you've got this far left, and with the left, basically, is a far left, really, and you've got the right as well. And you've got a few people in the middle, or a few million people in the middle. But generally speaking, the left and the right, they're all nutcases. They're all people that have to be right and believe they're absolutely right in what they say. And the other side has no opinion that matters in any way, shape or form. So therefore they can't repent because they can't admit they're wrong. And we're having more and more of that in society now, where you can't admit you're wrong, where you're not wrong. Because we know also there's a part of society, certainly from the left, that if you're wrong, you can be cancelled. Everything you do, you can lose your job, you can lose your home, you can lose everything. Because you said the wrong thing. Anything, the wrong thing. Yeah, because you've not said enough. Yeah, because you, you might have supported Black Lives Matter, but you haven't supported it enough. So therefore, they're going to cancel you. They've done it. They've done it. There, there was a person on a radio station who just asked some questions about Black Lives Matter. He got fired because of his views. He asked some questions. How is that wrong? But the problem is, when you ask questions, you see, you're asking questions of people who can't admit they're wrong. So the fact you're questioning what they believe, they have to attack you. Because they can't admit they're wrong. They can't even consider for a second that they might be wrong. And that's why we have this situation that I think even if we have a massive act of God, we are not going to see an awful lot go on there. We're not going to see a lot of repentance. We're not going to see a lot of people coming to to Christ because people are happy on this road to nowhere. They're happy on this road to nowhere. They're happy on this road where they can, you know, do these little childish bloody things to piss people off. They're happy with that. That sort of BS life, they're happy with that. And if they're happy with that, Go ahead. But as soon as I say go ahead, what I really mean is God cancel them. Cancel the whole bloody lot of them. End them right now. Yeah, give them brain tumors, whatever. Just end them right now. They're not worth it. Not worth anything in society. All they're going to do is cause a problem. That's all they're going to do. They have no worth. If they, if they are happy with that, then they have no worth. If they have no worth at all, then yeah, they should be gone. (sighs) 
Yeah, I find all that sort of stuff very annoying. These people to be very annoying because they just cause problems for others. And they don't care that they do that. They're blasé about it. And, you know, in olden days, you know, you would have been deaded. No time at all. Yeah, you know, the village would have kicked you out if you were like that, if you were painting the bloody ass. Whereas now, you've got a whole village that's like that now. The people that are just irritating and yeah, you know, like they've they've had these videos on the um ask that thing about these HMOs. It's HMOs? Yeah. And the ridiculous nature of these HMOs is absolutely insane. How these people are using these HMOs to make money. And how most of the people, residents in the area, hate anything to do with these HMOs. But they're blackmailed to, to join them. Crazy business. Absolutely insane. All this stuff that's going on is that people want to control other people. People want to be a pain in the ass to other people. And certainly, okay, let's correct that. People don't necessarily want to be a pain in the ass to other people, but they just don't care when they are. They just don't care. And that is pretty much the same as wanting, really. You might as well want to be a pain in the ass. If you just don't care whether you are, you might as well want to be. Because you're going to be because you don't care about it. You don't care if you're pissing people off or if you're hurting people in some way. I mean, that's why, to a certain degree, my, my answer to that is you know, there's enough psychopaths out there who would, you know, murder somebody, kidnap them and torture them to death for pissing them off. I don't need to react. I don't need to <laughs> go into a conversation with someone I just need to pray that God will deliver the right psychopath to these people. There you go. Do it that way, Lord. <laughs> because, yeah, dealing with people is, oh, God, it's... The, the, the levels of stupidity are just astounding. Really astounding. I look at people and I think, well, okay, you have one life. One life, that's it. Yeah, once you're dead, that's it. Right? Well, it is, that's, that's possibly If what they believe in, once you're dead, that's it. Then you'd expect them to be doing so much more with their life. But if you accept that, you know, there's a heaven and there's a hell, surely you'd be trying to get into the heaven, not the hell. You then surely understand that you could die at any point in time. Any point in time. I did a video only recently about um, the fact that, you know, we should be so grateful that we're still here because, you know, we could have died you know, any of 200 ways every single day of our life. The things that could have happened. But that's the reality. We could be face to face with God, with judgment, at any point in time. And yet we don't care if we're just pissing around with life. If we're just, you know, existing, playing at life, having our bits of fun, you know, Slugging people off to the neighbours, gossiping, all this sh crap. Doing things to irritate neighbours, all this stuff, or to irritate work colleagues. Some of the things that people do to irritate work colleagues is quite funny. When you've got a work colleague that's a bit naughty. Again, these are r slash ones. You've had ones at Pro Revenge, where... At work situation, people would put their food in the fridge. And someone would come and steal their food. So on one occasion, this man put uh, mealworms into 
made it into a sandwich and just spoke in the general office area about how he's looking forward to eating his sandwich he's got something really wonderful today and when he got to the fridge later there was a bite mark <laughs> in his sandwich and then the person just put it back <laughs> so that sort of malicious stuff yeah that's funny <laughs> And doing that, you understand it. You've got someone who is a thief, someone stealing your property. Yeah, rather than beat the crap out of them, you know, do something to stop them from doing that. That's understandable. Yeah. Um, it's a nicer way of doing dealing with them reporting them for theft and get them in trouble at work. It's just a way of deterring them from continuing to do that. So that's cool. Um yeah. People just need to wise up. Yeah, because as I say, if there is one knife and that's it, once you're dead, you're dead. What the heck is the point in getting married? What's that? What is the point in going to work? What's the point in doing all that? Just have fun. You've got one knife. Have fun. The anarchy makes sense. If there's one knife and once you're dead, that's it then anarchy makes complete flipping sense. Go and have fun. But if there's a heaven or, and a hell, then you know, try and stay out the worst one. Try and get in the better one. Try it. Actively try. So you've got no flipping excuse. If you die and you face judgment, you go to hell for eternity, you have no excuse at all. That's the reality of the situation. Try to get in the good one. You know, try to be decent towards other people. Stop being a pain in the bloody ass to people. And think. If someone's having a go at someone, there's, there's a reason for it. If someone said something that's out of order and they don't normally do that, there's probably a reason for that, you know? There's probably something you've done that's caused that to happen. So accept responsibility for your crap. Instead, it's always just a case of you, know, you demand that the other person change because what they did was wrong. Excuse me, what about what you've done? Yes, yeah, so I've made a video on um, forgiving people. And I have no problem forgiving people. And the reason why I don't have any problem forgiving people is because I know it doesn't set them free. It sets me free from what they've done. It doesn't set them free. And I know pretty much most of the people that I have to forgive haven't repented. They have not repented. So I'm not going to hold on to unforgiveness for them. There's no point in that. But it is something we can learn from. Don't be that sort of a-hole to people because you're going to come up with adjustment. You're going to be judged. And it's not my job to judge anyone. It's not anyone else's job, any human's job to judge any person because nobody knows anyone that well. But God does. God sees what you do. He sees what you think. He sees how you make your decisions. So he sees whether you're doing things maliciously. He sees whether you're doing things to piss people off. He sees whether you are trying to be a decent human being, whether you're, whether you're trying to be decent to people. He sees all of that. We don't. We only see what people allow us to see or what we see during the interactions that we have with people, which unless we're living with them 24-7, we don't see very much of people at all. But God does. God sees everything. So God judges you based on everything that he sees. Unless you repent of everything that you've done. But most people just won't repent because as I said, as I said, they don't accept 
that what they've done is wrong. They can't. They can't accept that they're flawed because as soon as they accept that, their whole world may just fall apart. Or their whole understanding, like all these people on the left who cancel people who are wrong. Yeah, if they just accept that they might be flawed humans, then all of a sudden their whole agenda, everything just falls apart. The people on the right, if they accept that maybe the Confederate stuff in America certainly um, was wrong, then yeah, their whole way of life may just fall apart because it's based on, you know, a belief system that is just wrong. So people hold on to these wrongs. Like in America, you've got a president who's lying. And you know, that chap, View, was making a video about it the other day, saying that the president is, is denying things. And I just made a comment to say that, you know, when the president lies, that's just like everyone else telling the truth. When the president's telling the truth, it's just like the most honest person lying. You know, the shock you get. What? That person lied? Really? What? The president actually told the truth? That's what you got with Trump. You got this narciss narcissistical TV personality <laughs> as president. And he's way out of his depth, to say the least. Way out of his depth. What he's good at is the you know, speaking to the crowd, which is why he's, he does that on a regular basis because he's not good at the rest. He wants to get out of the White House and go and speak to his crowd all the time because that's what he's good at. Yeah, you point out to him that well, recently he was supposed to have this. Uh, <laughs> that was quite funny. <laughs> uh, he was supposed to have this big convention where he was saying that there was a million people that wanted tickets for it and he was being spammed um there was a load of young people um spamming him on the fact that there was all these people that wanted to go to the convention when i think only 300 people turned up <laughs> it's only funny because yeah in his world the conventions are basically what he's good at as a president is the only thing he's good at as a president so you know he's the importance of these conventions to him is massive so i mean on the day that he realizes that he's not very good at that either oh dear he will probably just resign <laughs> oh dear but that's not trust that that will happen and you know anyone in america just needs to get out and vote in november you know don't muck around you know understand that even if biden is leading the polls by quite a lot that means nothing because you know four years ago clinton was leading the polls by quite a lot and trump won because quite often yeah you know, the left what happens is is that if their candidate is leading the polls they don't go out the vote because they don't think they need to. But the right, they go out and vote anyway because of the fact that they just want to make sure they win. But the left, oh, we're going to win. That's fine. They've got a blase attitude towards it and then they get Trump. That's why they get Trump. It's because they've got a blase attitude towards it. They'd rather stay at home than go out and vote because we're probably going to win anyway. We've got a massive majority. But that's the polls. Don't ever believe the polls. I'm not talking about the Polish people. <laughs> Different matter. That was a Nazi belief that you shouldn't believe the Poles. Um, there you go, a little Nazi joke. Oh, dear. Well, there you go. That I have to do for today. There's me rant. That was a little rant. That was something that was swimming around in my head <laughs> for a few days. So I figured out oh, it, it's an interesting point. You know, because it does explain why I, generally speaking, I don't like to hang around with people that often. Because um, people are bizarre. The stuff they come out with, the stuff they do, is just bizarre. 
Yeah, as I say, how you can see wrong in others, but you can't see wrong in you, I don't know. I don't know. You know, I can see wrong in me. But then again, I suppose... But years ago, from a Christian point of view, I asked God to shake me, break me, and make me. Yeah, to basically, you know, show me the things that were wrong in me and to deal with them. And so that may be why I can see the wrong things that are wrong in me. But then, come on, folks, do it. Do that yourselves. There's a lot of people in the world, and there's a lot of people to be pissed off with and, you know, and to piss off. You know, to annoy so we're never going to get on with everyone that's the reality that's the reality of, of the truth because the world is full of so many people and unless you're a people pleaser and a very very good people pleaser you won't get on with everyone you just won't I mean I've, I've got things that I could say about people that I'm not going to I've got no interest in being nasty towards somebody or you know, spiteful or anything like that. This, this video, well, actually, that's another point. Toward, at the end of this, I realized something yesterday. These aren't really YouTube videos. These are YouTube podcasts because there's no real video of it. Um, so it really is a podcast but with, with pictures. You get pictures of doggies and nice beaches and stuff like that with a few flowers and whatever um so it really is a podcast so at the end of this podcast we're at the end of this one now so i will speak to you soon god bless you take care of yourself and have a great week it is i believe monday today isn't it weird that's another point though the days are going like that where you have to look at the calendar to see what day it is. <laughs> oh, we had torrential rain again today. Yesterday we had torrential rain. It's great now. Because um, I said the other video that I've got tarp up now. And so now when there's torrential rain, you know, I get quite excited. <laughs> like I did when I was a child. Yeah, you know, it's great. It's quite exciting. Ooh. Torrential rain, look at that come down. It did come down earlier. I mean, I've got two massive buckets out there. Um, I think 250 litres of water can fit in each. They were pretty empty because we've had some a lot of sunshine. And so I've had to fill the doggies' water bowls up. Well, I've got a massive uh, metal water bowl. And you know the washing up bowls? One of them out there as well. <laughs> Both of these things filled up with water. And on the hot days, they, they were getting empty very, very quickly. And so, yeah, there was no water coming in through rain into the buckets, um, into the water barrels. And now, after two days of rain, they're full to the brim. To, <laughs> they're overflowing. <laughs> We've had torrential rain two days in a row. Which is, in, in the end, it's just like 20 minutes of torrential rain, but that's 20 minutes is equivalent to you know, a good three hours of rain in 20 minutes to suddenly <laughs> <laughs> it's great it's i love it well now my place doesn't get flooded i love it you know just see that torrential rain because it's like when you're a kid and you see that you go out on it of course as an adult you don't go out on it because it's wet you get wet <laughs> well i wouldn't if i was with a bunch of people maybe i would but um just for me, no. Again, if I was in a place where I didn't have the place, I mean, now with the steps going up and neighbours and all that, um, and it's torrential rain, I might take my dogs out in it just for a bit of a joke, a bit of fun. Dance around in the torrential rain sort of thing. Yeah, so, all right. But there you go. It's nearly 1pm, so I will say goodbye for this one. And you take care. God bless, and I will speak to you soon. Again, have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.